All right, folks, thanks so much for giving us a few moments there. We appreciate that very much. Uh, there, there are going to be a number of, say, hopefully brief speeches, uh, but again, uh, we'll move through that as quickly as we can. Just firstly, as moderator, let me warmly congratulate Trevor on your installation here. Um, I trust that as you sat out in a new ministry that you know God's blessing, that Suzanne and the children indeed would, would feel very much part at home here in Glenway. And so let me congratulate you on uh, your new charge here in Glenway. And let me congratulate uh, the congregation of Glenway. You've chosen well. And with that comes that responsibility to support, encourage, and pray for your new minister, wife, and family. And that as you work together, may you know God's goodness and God's blessing. Well, the man that should have been doing all this is it's Stephen Kennedy. As I say, he's down with COVID, but we're wonderful. Technology is a wonderful thing. We're going to hear from Stephen by a video link just now. So he's going to bring his greetings. Hi everyone, unfortunately I have had to record this video because I'm not able to be with you tonight. I have now had COVID as many times as the Prime Minister has changed this year, which is not ideal. I am really disappointed not to be with you this evening. Tonight is a significant night for your church family and it would have been great to take part in the service. Uh, thank you to the members of the Vacancy Commission for their help over the past year and also for leading and taking part in the service this evening. Uh, thank you especially to the Reverend Brian Boyd for preaching the charge at such short notice. Uh, you now have a new minister, which is very exciting. Uh, Trevor, can I wish you the Lord's richest blessing as you begin ministry in Glenwary. Uh, please know that we'll be praying for you, Suzanne, Noah, Eli, Judah, Eva and Joseph. And we're looking forward to hearing of how the Lord is in, at work in Glenwary in the coming days. Uh, to the congregation, thank you for all of your support during the vacancy. Thank you to Kirk Session and the Congregational Committee for all your help in the past year. I would like to thank two people in particular. Uh, first of all, George Crothers for all his work on getting the manse ready. I know Session and Committee greatly appreciate his dedication. And secondly, Andrew Hoy, your clerk of Session. It has been a privilege to work with Andrew and I'd like to thank him for all the work that he has done in the past year. Uh, your congregation has continued to function smoothly and that's mainly down to a lot of unseen work by Andrew. As I've said, I'm really disappointed not to be with you tonight, but tonight is not all about me and it's not all about my inability to be with you. Tonight is about the Lord Jesus and about how he is building his church slowly but surely and of how he is progressing the work in Glenwary. Tonight, you should be thankful to the Lord for his goodness to your church family the vacancy has progressed very smoothly and on Sunday, a new era begins. We'll be praying that those of you who know and love the Lord Jesus will be built up in your faith and that those of you who don't know him will come to know him for the first time. I hope tonight has been really encouraging for you as a congregation. May the Lord continue to bless you in the days that lie ahead. I had to say that because he might be listening later on. So, <laughs> but we really, on, on, uh, as moderator Stephen, if you are listening, then uh, thank you for all the work that you've done, and you've done an excellent job here at Glen Murray. We're moving on to our next speech, and we're delighted the Reverend Robin Brown is with us tonight. Robin is minister in First Port of Down, where Trevor was working. So, I want to invite Robin to come and say a few words. Thanks, Robin. Thank you, Brian. Thank you, folk of Glenworry. It's a delight for us from Portadown to be with you this evening. Um, you know, guess something of the esteem and love we hold Trevor and the fact that so many people are here to uh, share this evening with him or just to make sure he's gone. I'm not sure. <laughs> but, uh, but can I say to the folk of Glenworry, congratulations on filling a vacancy. Vacancies are particularly difficult to fill in these days. You will have realized that there are a host of them throughout the Presbyterian Church in Ireland and beyond the Presbyterian Church in Ireland, there are other vacancies. And as you get to know Trevor, you'll realize he has other interests. He's an interest in politics, and apparently there are vacancies in the political sphere. <laughs> 
and, and he's an interest in sport, and apparently there's a vacancy there that concerns him in the managerial position of Aston Villa. So, so you will discover that uh, Trevor has an interest in these things. But well done, your vacancy's filled, and we delight to share in this evening with you and to see Trevor safely installed here. Trevor came to us quite by surprise. I didn't know of his existence, and uh, we had been eagerly trying to find someone to serve as part of our ministry team, and there were no uh, candidates. Trevor will still gripe about the fact that he thinks I preferred other people to him. That was really because I didn't know he was there. But as a gift from God, he came to us and first put it down. And Folk of Glenbury, let me tell you about how we get on with our test drive. We are no longer uh, in possession of Trevor, but uh, you're going to have him. But we have run him through his paces. So let me just share a few things about what we have discovered in the person of, of Trevor Keane. And, and what people will tell you if you ask them here is that he has a heart for people. He loves people. And he, as he comes to Glenbury, will love you and pastor you well. He will be warm and approachable. He has a great sense of humor. He's a tremendous friend and encourager. And you will discover that as you interact with him, that he will be an effective pastor. And because he is a good pastor, he will proclaim God's word to you. He will share with you, as Brian was encouraging us all to consider, that he will ensure that because he has a heart for your best, that you would know the God who reveals himself through his word. And he, he is a great preacher. It frustrated me so much that he seemed to find that so easy. And he would tell me when he was given a task that, oh, I've done that, that's fine, and I've got the sermon ready, and I'm thinking, but... How did that happen? Trevor seemed to have a brilliant ability just to produce top quality work in midweek or sermons with, with, with seemingly no effort. So you will find that he proclaims God's word faithfully and effectively in ways that both challenge and encourage you as appropriate. So you will find in him someone who is a, a delight to have as your minister. Brian, are we allowed to say nice things or was that, you, you were, that's okay tonight? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just he said that people maybe butter people up the wrong way and say too many nice things, but uh, <laughs> you will find, no, just tonight, just tonight you, you will find that all of this is true. But uh, last thing I need to do is having told you a little bit about what you can expect through Trevor in, in the months and years ahead here in Glenworry, just to say to Trevor and to Zan, Zan the family, how much we miss you. Uh, we have to get on without you. And that's left a big hole. Usually the front row of the church is where the, the Cain family found a way to occupy. And so they're... Not by choice. Not by choice. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to say any more, but I'm going to... But somehow the Cain family were nearly always right there in the front row. And every time I look down now and see a gap, I think that's where the Cain family should be. And, and so we're, we, when we see that empty front pew, Trevor will think about you and pray for you. And we really do want to do that we, as we will continue to do that. Uh, I keep saying when people talk about it, say, Trevor who? Uh, 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 but uh, no, uh, that's just a personal gripe from me because I feel that you've left me in the lurch and I, I just feel that so much. But, 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 but we do love this family, the Cain family. I hope Glen Worry come to love them too. And please be assured, Trevor, Suzanne, Noah, Eli, Judah, Eva and Joseph, we will continue to pray for you as you uh, minister here. We will not forget about you. And uh, maybe we'll see you down Portadown. Maybe we'll see you up here in Glenworry. But uh, even if we don't, we'll, we'll not forget about and carry you always before the Lord in prayer. Every blessing on you, my friend. Robin, thanks so much for sharing uh, a little bit about Trevor's time in First Port of Dying. I'm going to ask then the clerk of session here, Mr. Andrew Hoy, to come and share some words. Thank you. Thank you. This isn't my speech, by the way. This is a couple of letters that's been given. My speech is in this here, so don't worry about it. <laughs> <laughs> Members of the Commission, thank you for coming. Thank you for leading the service tonight. Thank you all for coming. Seeing so many here, seeing the church so well filled. 
please forgive me, I have to run through a lot of thanks for all those who have taken part in the service tonight. I'll do that as brief as I can for the audio, the visual team, for Martin, for Thomas, and for Matthew down there. I need to thank Evelyn and to the praise group for all the work that they have done. Thank you for the choir, for forming a choir again after COVID. So thanks to them. Stephen mentioned in his speech, George, who did so much work in preparing the months, the committee will want me to reinforce that for the work that he's done and for the work that he's done round about the church and for all who helped him. I need to thank those who have prepared the tea tonight on your behalf. Looks good. There's loads there. Please do eat up. Thanks to Walva who coordinated that and for everybody who helped her. I want to thank the members of the Vacancy Commission who have helped us through the vacancy and made things go so smoothly. Can I pick out the clerk and the deputy clerk for their help, for their wisdom through the vacancy at certain times? I have a couple of messages here. There's been messages come, Trevor. Uh, I'll pass them on to you. I have a couple here from a couple of past ministers. One's from the Reverend Jim, Jim Gordon. And he just says, please, please to convey to Trevor and to his family our very best wishes for the future and our prayer that they will go, know God's richest blessings in their new sphere of service. And one from the Reverend Kenny Hanna. He says that we realize this is a very special evening for the work of the gospel in Glenhurry. We're excited for what is yet to be accomplished under the leadership of the Reverend Trevor Cain, the Kirk Session, Jesus' followers, and ultimately by the work of God himself. Please be assured of our ongoing prayers for you all. For as the Apostle Paul wrote, I planted, Apollos watered, but God gave the growth. So neither he who plants nor he who waters is anything, but only God who gives the growth. We would like to wish Trevor, Suzanne, Noah, Eli, Judah, Eva, and Joseph God's richest blessing for the future. They trust like us, you will find Glenhurry to be a warm and welcoming church family. We also hope and pray that as Noah, Eli, Judah, Eva, and Joseph grow up, you will feel as happy at Murphy's Primary School as Rebecca and Matthew did. May God be at work drawing lost people to salvation in Jesus. May equip and send out Jesus' followers to be salt and light for him in their daily lives. And may all the glory go to God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit from Kenny and Frida and the family. I would like to thank our convener. He's left us in the lurch at the last minute. <laughs> we didn't know Stephen really before this because he was the new guy in Bukna. For those of you who don't know where Bukna is, it's sort of that direction. <laughs> it's on the other side of the hall, on the dark side of Slamish. No, I do. Stephen has been great. He's been a great help to us. He's put in a lot of work for us. We're very thankful for the time that he's given to us. He's been here at least once a month taking services. And we're so thankful for him and for the work he's put into it. Uh, I'm sure he'll be watching us back. So, Stephen, thank you for all your help. The session really enjoyed working with you. The congregation has made a friend. We've all made friends. I've made a friend and coming to know you. But it's down a wee bit gushy that and it's really not like me. So <laughs> <coughs> I'll leave a word of scripture for you. Uh, every time you read it, you'll think of us. And it's in First Deuteronomy, part of verse 5 and part of verse 6. And it says this. You've been here long enough. It's time to move on. <laughs> and... Uh, that sort of <laughs> illustrates a couple of things because, well, it is time to move on. There's a new chapter beginning now. Just like those messages from previous ministers, their chapters have ended. There's a new chapter opening. And so we look forward to that and we thank God for it. We're really thankful because we firmly believe as a Kirk session, God has led us in this direction. We are convinced of it. So we are. We are convinced of it. And so as this new chapter opens, an old chapter closes. And so as we move on, we look forward to Trevor, to his ministry, coming, to him coming and working among us. But also that verse that I left there reminds us of something else. Any fool can pick out a verse of scripture and make it say what he wants it to say. And that's why we need one who can rightly divide the word of truth. 
and who can search the scriptures on our behalf and preach it to us as we've been reminded tonight and to bring that word to us. So as we were thinking how we best can support our new minister as a congregation, as a session, let's commit ourselves to being present whenever the word is preached, both the morning service and the evening service and to the midweeks. Let's commit ourselves to being there, to sitting under the word that is prepared for us as he brings God's word to us. And let's devote ourselves to prayer because we realize that nothing of any substance is going to happen in this congregation unless we're praying, for it's only God that does that and God that gives the increase. So Trevor, we do thank you for coming and we look forward to sitting on to your ministry here. Uh, I do have a small gift for you. I nearly forgot it. I had to phone home for it, but <laughs> it's no big secret what it is. It's a book token, by the way. But... <laughs> Really, it's because we do want you to spend that time in the study. We realize that most of your time will be taken up in the study. And so we want you to do that on our behalf and to bring that word to us. Now, there's five really important guests here tonight, and I have to mention you. Noah, Eli, Judah, Eva, and Joseph. Is Joseph still there? Is he? Oh, he's oh, okay. We are really glad that you are here. Tonight's been all about your dad so far, but really you are really important too. And we are so thankful that you're here. We want you to really feel at home here in this congregation. We want you to make loads of friends here. And we do hope that you'll be really happy growing up here. I have got something for you. And I've got a couple of helpers here going to come and give that to you now. Thank you. If you want to get to our end, feel free. There's nothing worse. Than, <laughs> nothing worse than sitting through speeches, honestly. <laughs> Suzanne, thank you for coming too. We recognise it's an upheaval, common, moving the family, new house, small token of our appreciation for you and would you believe even the hot top when the month is packed down in the middle of it all and you can imagine <laughs> what that's like so thank you for coming you. I'm done by the way <laughs> Thanks very much, Andrew. We're glad you only had a small piece of paper after all. But <laughs> thanks so much for all that you shared this evening. And um, I trust that as clerk at session and ministers, you work together, you'll know the blessing of God. Now it's time for the wee man. For the big man. <laughs> Let's put our hands together for the new minister of Glenmore. This is probably the first time tonight I've actually seen most of you, so it's good to see you. I don't know who Trevor Daniel Cain is, but someone should really tell him that he's been appointed the new minister of Glen Wherry. That's Trevor David Cain, it gives me great pleasure to stay. Oh, where's Brian? Brian there? I wasn't going to bring it up, but, you know. It's all right, Joseph's not here. He'll probably never watch again anyway, so it's okay. It gives me great joy to stand here tonight as the new minister, oh, I've dropped everything now, of Glen Wherry. And it's really my role tonight just to give thanks to a number of folks who've made uh, this evening possible. And the first group of people I want to thank are, are you all for being here. It means a lot to us as a family and it means a lot uh, to me personally to see you here this evening. Some people have traveled a considerable distance to be here and uh, I just want to, to thank you really. To the people of Glen Wherry, uh, It is a mighty thing when a congregation calls you to be their minister. 
whenever that piece of paper or those pieces of paper are placed into your hands, it's a solemn responsibility and it's a solemn undertaking. And so I want to, to thank you for calling me to be your next minister. I hope you know that it's not an undertaking I take lightly. It's not an undertaking that I take in my own strength or in my own ability, but we will look to the Lord to provide the increase for all that we're trying to do. So thank you for, for calling me and calling the family to be the next minister here. I want to thank all of those who've helped to make tonight possible. Andrew's already thanked uh, most of them. Uh, so I won't start again in case I miss someone out and offend someone on my first night. But you can probably get away with it tonight if you can't get away with it any other time. So thank you to anyone who's helped to, to, to make tonight possible. It's been a great night. It's been a great night of praise to God. Uh, and we're so grateful for that. I want to thank the people who first poured it down who made the effort to, to be here. As I look around, I can see a lot of... Uh, familiar faces uh, and I just want to thank you for making the effort to come this evening from Portadown. Again, we greatly appreciate your presence here and we greatly appreciate the fact that you're starting out with us on this journey. Know that we will, as a family, be praying for you uh, as you continue to pray for us. Robin said lots of nice things about me, most of which were probably untrue, as you'll come to find out in the years to come. Um, but, but just I want to thank Robin personally. Uh, we never really had a relationship where Robin was the boss. I mean, technically, was the, he was the boss. You know, he could have fired me without consultation with anyone. Um, how many times he felt like doing that, I'm not sure. I haven't really found out. Um, but it was never that kind of relationship. We were friends before we were anything else. And the great thing about Robin is that he's been around the church that long, that you can phone him and ask him anything, and he knows the answer to it. You know, what committee does this? Robin will know the answer, and largely because he's probably served on it at some point or other over the past number of years. But I'll miss having you there uh, to bounce ideas off. I'll miss having you there uh, for feedback on sermons and things. And I, I, I just want to thank you that you were there for us for those two years, and you've been such an encouragement, such a help, as we've bedded into the PCI over these past two years. So thank you very much. I don't know if Albert's here. Is he Albert Baxter? No? Uh, I just want to thank Albert and the reception of the ministers and Licentiates Committee for all the help that they've been over this past two years. Uh, as I started out on the journey from the Free Church of Scotland, where I was minister in Dumfries, over uh, to the Presbyterian Church in Ireland, Albert and the committee were uh, a great help and a great encouragement over those two years. Thank you to the folks here of the, the Vacancy Commission who uh, uh, have helped and put on tonight's service. Thank you to Brian for the word uh, that you preached and that encouraging but challenging charge that you brought to us as a people, so thank you for that. I want to thank the kids. You know, it hasn't been easy just up and leaving Port Down. It hasn't been easy up and leaving everything that they know, but you've done it so well. And I just want to say that I am uh, proud of you. I'm proud of the people that you're growing into, so uh, thank you to you. Thank you to Stephen, the vacancy convener. Stephen, it feels like ever since I accepted the call, Stephen has been on the phone every day at some point or other asking me a question, or I've been on the phone to him asking a question, but uh, again, I wouldn't have known Stephen before this whole process started, but having interacted with him over these past wee while, you feel that you've made a friend, and he's a, a, a good man, so thank you to Stephen, I know he can't be here. Uh, thank you to Suzanne. You know, this, we've been married 12 years, I hope. We've been married 12 years. This is our 10th house move in those 12 years. Um, and generally, it's all right for me. I just say we're moving here and Suzanne packs up the boxes and does all the other stuff that needs sorted out, moving schools and things. So thank you for, for being willing to do that. Uh, people of Glen Wary, if you see a Logan's removal van in the driveway of the Manse anytime soon, you can, I don't know, deflate the tires or something. Just... <laughs> Don't let us go. I, I'm so grateful to have you by my side for all that we do and to, to start this journey together. Uh, so thank you to Suzanne. But most of all, we're grateful to God for leading us here this evening and bringing us to this point. God has led us very clearly to Glen Wary, has brought us to this congregation. And we trust that God has brought us here to fulfill his plans and purposes. We are excited for what lies ahead. We're excited for the possibilities that are here. I was reminded 
just the other day that I'm in over my head here. Someone started talking to me about broiler chickens. I had no idea what a broiler chicken was. <laughs> and then he told me he had 38,000 of them. I couldn't imagine that number of chickens. If we're left to do this on our own strength, I'll say this to you right now, you know. If you want me to come here and tell you how to make your lambs five kilograms heavier, if you want me to come here and tell you how to get 5% more milk out of your top milkers every day, you've got the wrong guy. But what I will try to do as long as we're here is to love you well, is to lead you in the Lord, and is to preach God's word to you because that's what I've been called and sent to do, to preach the counsel of God and the whole counsel of God. Thank you to those finally then who have prepared tea. I'm going to give thanks for it now, uh, and then we will enjoy it together. Is that the plan, Andrew? Yep. So let's join our hearts together in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you this evening for the way that you lead and guide us, for the way that you have a plan for each of our lives, that before any of our days came to be, Heavenly Father, you had them prepared and written in your book. We thank you for leading the congregation to this point of calling a new minister. And we pray, Father, that you would bless us in the days that lie ahead, that you would go before us as a congregation, that you would build this house, because unless the Lord builds the house, the laborers toil in vain. We pray, Heavenly Father, that there would be great days ahead for this congregation, days where we see many people who don't yet know Jesus come to faith in him, Days, Heavenly Father, when we see those who do know and love Jesus built up and strengthened in their faith. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for the food that has been prepared for us. We thank you for the opportunity that we have to fellowship around it. We pray that you would bless our time together, bless the hands that have made that food, and forgive us for our sin, we ask. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Thank you, folks.